Friday, 29 July 2022. This is the, it's really beginning to get out of winter here in the Lowveld. And uh, the days are actually quite nice. And fortunately, the area I live in is known for being fairly windless. So it is sunny days, no wind. I like that. The wind really disturbs my soul. I want to start this skid mark off with something that happened uh, on one of my groups one a few days ago. A guy made a claim that Putin is taking the Russian people's money to fight the war. Is that true? That was the message that I sent on Twitter to a guy that lives in Russia and that makes a lot of uh, posts about the conditions in living there, general living conditions and he uh, posts a lot about the shops and things like that and uh, a while back I got a lot of information from him and that formed the basis of the two skid marks that I did on small businesses in Russia. So I posed this question to him and here is his response. Nope. Russia has 400 to 500 billion on its current account. That's without reserves. It doesn't need people's money. But it is what Ukraine is doing. All accounts of people in territories now controlled by Russia have been closed and pensions are not being paid. Now, that I have read a lot of posts about that uh, the Ukraine government just confiscated the people's money in their accounts and closed the accounts in the banks that is in regions that is now under Russia's control. And uh, I have also read articles where the Russians were giving the pensioners a cash amount to tide them over until they are registered on the Russian pension schemes. And in these banks that confiscated people's money, the Russians just simply told the people everything that they owe to those banks is written off. All the debts are written off. Nobody is going to pay any debts that they had with those banks. So it is a complex story. I think sometimes we just see headlines or we see articles and we don't really grasp the full implications around the uh, administrative things that is going haywire when something happens like what is happening now in Eastern Ukraine. I have thought a lot about, I was wondering, many of those industries and so that are now under Russian control and the owners of those businesses, most probably some of them live in Kiev or in Western Ukraine and so what. What is happening with the ownership of things like that? I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. I would, it would be quite interesting to know what is the actual situation. But that's what wars does. Stupid things happen to people. And then there is, uh, there is something that ties into this financing, businessing thing. This guy says there is one more argument in favor of it. Taxes. The personal income tax is a flat rate, not progressive, and a Russian taxpayer will not pay more than 15% of their income in taxes. 13% in most cases. Sole traders and independent professionals may opt to pay 6% of income or 15% of the net profit if their revenue is less than 200 million rubles per year. That's about 3.2 million dollars. Having less than 150 million rubles in assets and less than 100 employees. This is, to me, this is a fair tax system and it's not complicated and it's a flat rate and you know what you are in for. And then here is something. Now, I've made skid marks in which I've mentioned the fact that, well, the West is fumbling around and wasting money in Ukraine and throwing weapons at it and just war, war, war. 
The Russians are working on their future. And here is an article. Erdogan knows that Russia will win and that Russia must be respected. Erdogan said that Vladimir Putin expressed a desire to establish cooperation with the Turkish manufacturer of unmanned aerial vehicles, Bayraktar. And yeah, but I have also read articles where the Russians said they don't want the uh, current Bayraktar versions because apparently the Russian anti-air services are mowing those Bayraktars down like shooting ducks in hunting season. And then here is something that makes me smile. This sanction war against Russia backfired in a big way. But listen to this. Washington has withdrawn transactions with a number of Russian products from sanctions. For example, fertilizers, food, seed materials, medicines and medical equipment. The decision was made by the US Treasury Department. But the thing about this that really annoys me is they do it quietly without any fanfare. Just quietly in the background they cut these things because these sanctions were hurting the Americans. And that's why they roll it back. But they don't propagate it. They don't go with the same energy to the EU and say, listen guys, this and this is not working out. Let's cut these sanctions, scrap these sanctions now. They don't do it like that. Why? Because they're devious. And then there's you know, a follow-up on that. The big issues is that the US and its allies have made the anti-Russia programming so loud and pervasive that they are now caught in their own narrative. They would perceive it as too much of a loss of face to roll back sanctions, even counterproductive ones. And that is so true. And he continues, reputational damage. That is why, for instance, so many West companies pulled out of Russia right after the special military operation started, even though most were not required by sanctions to do so. Unprecedented between nations. Face-saving behavior may reverse the situation. And now I get to this one. Back to the UK. Where else? And Rishi Sunak, a guy in the run to become Prime Minister. Former UK Chancellor Rishi Sunak launched a broadside against China on Monday, pledging to face down Beijing should he become Britain's next Prime Minister. The Asian giant represents the largest threat to the UK and the global security and prosperity as a whole, Sunak claimed, announcing various steps he would take as Premier. These Britons they are suffering from illusions of grandeur. They are no longer the mighty British Empire. They are an island nation and they are out there supposed to look after their people on that island. But they keep on throwing out statements like this, taking on China. That would be a circus. The program to tackle the alleged Chinese threat includes closing all 30 of China's Confucius Institutes in the UK, which are an instrument of Beijing's soft power, the PM hopeful asserted. He also promised to ramp up intelligence activities to counter Chinese industrial espionage. And the craziness and madness just continue. That could actually be a what a fuck post. And he's not finished yet. China and the Chinese Communist Party represents the largest threat to Britain and the world this century. This man, I don't know why are they so belligerent. These guys are forever, every one of those major politicians, senior politicians, when their mouths open, it's war, 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 war. And he's not finished yet. Other measures include creating a new international alliance bringing together unspecified free nations 
that would help to tackle Chinese cyber threats and share best practice in technology security. On top of this, Sunak pledged to protect key British assets from Chinese takeovers. That means examining the need to prevent Chinese acquisitions of key British assets, including strategically sensitive tech firms, Sunak added. This man, you see, this is the type of nonsense that they talk. And I mean, it's a stupid thing. I wonder where is, where are these so-called free nations that he wants to bring together? Where are they? They're outside of the West and they don't want no part of the West. And this one, also basically a what a fuck. It's something that all of us knows and suspects and talks about in hushed voices. Special relationship. UK has been covering up US crimes. Recently declassified documents show that the UK provides blind support to its closest ally, the US, by covering up its crimes, including the shooting down of an Iranian airliner in 1988. I hear things like this and I read things like this and I have to exercise a lot of constraint not to start swearing. And then there was an answer, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, you can pause the video and look at that, and read that a guy made a lengthy answer on that article. It's interesting to consider when all this started, although the justifications for fighting against Hitler in World War II were obvious, there were signs even then that the Allies were slipping into criminal activity. And it is quite a lengthy post he made, and there's a few hairy things in it. And now we come to something that could also be a what a fuck, but it is not a what a fuck, it's actually a tragedy, and, a, and it is one of those things that strikes me with stupidity. I don't know how to express myself in this situation. Sanctions on Russia could leave Britain without fish and chips. Around 5,000 of Britain's 10,500 fish and chip shops may be forced to shut down over soaring prices for ingredients and energy caused by the sanctions imposed on Russia over its military operations in Ukraine. The chippers are already under pressure but the situation has become even worse after the authoritarian uh, authorities after the authorities decided to slap a 35% tariff on seafood from Russia around a third of Britain's white fish comes from Russia in order to stay afloat shops may have to replace the traditional cod and haddock with hake and other cheaper types of fish this makes me angry, but the people must be blamed. They take this nonsense from these politicians. Look at this. Look at the numbers. How many people are going to lose their income? How many people are going to lose their jobs? But those politicians don't care. They get a nice lacquer salary. They are buffered against inflation. They're buffered against rising energy costs. They are okay. It is the plebs that must suffer. The peasants must suffer because the masters have spoken. And then here comes another one. Also something that we are all aware of, but nobody talks about it. James Woolsey, former director of the CIA, has admitted in a Fox News interview that the US has in the past interfered with elections in foreign countries. When asked if the US still did this, Wolseley laughed and said, only for good causes. Former CIA director admits US medals in other countries' elections. We know they're doing it. That is what they do. Look now, the Ukraine fiasco is a result of this type of meddling. And then here, yeah, Something that just makes me shake my head because idiots are in charge. US military prepares for Pelosi's Taiwan trip. 
Washington officials told the AP that U.S. military would increase its movement of forces and assets in the Indo-Pacific should Nancy Pelosi travel to Taiwan in future. What are they trying to do? What can the U.S. gain by doing this? But play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And just a message, it's all over the show that today, Biden's stories and so forth. Recession, U.S. GDP falls by 0.9% in quarter two, marking a second quarter of negative growth. But the White House claims it wasn't going into a recession. And yeah, I saw that video. It is absolutely stunning. Now this one is an interesting one. Not left, not right, forward. America's new third party emerges. Former Republicans and Democrats joined forces on Wednesday to create a new centrist national party to fight political extremism that is ripping our nation apart. The new party called Forward. Now yeah, I'm going to stop it. You can, you can read it in full. But the principle here is something that I have questioned many times. Why does the U.S. only have two political parties? It is... I don't understand. It's the same shit is happening in England. But I don't know whether a third party, how much support it will muster at the polls. And then we get to the Warafa. And this is actually a scary Warafa. This WEF New World Order cabal that has been promoting this diversity program of those days that were all 100% in favor of millions of immigrants streaming into Europe and people from the Middle East and now we've got waves of them from Africa and more waves coming and you've got countries that, like Sweden where the original Swedish people are no longer the majority in their own country and it's happening more and more and more and more Div all in the name of diversity look at this image this is the Greek soccer team now just tell me, where are the Greeks? I see no Greeks. And people accept this. This is no problem for them. I see pictures of school children in Sweden, a whole class full of children, 30, 30 students, two white people. Guys, what a fact is not the is not a strong enough thing to explain what I feel when I see something like this. I am proud of my heritage. I am proud of my race. And call me a racist if you like. I am white and I am proud of it. In any case, let's not get too depressed. Tomorrow is Saturday and on a Saturday we braai in South Africa. And I hope you guys have something special lined up for the weekend and hit the like, hit the subscribe and share that thing. That helps me a lot. Have a great evening.